Well guys, after I did a video about the shortcomings of the Psyonix Aurora as a night vision device, I got a whole bunch of comments saying that the Pro model has significantly better performance than the original. Notably, I think that all of these comments came from people who haven't actually used both of these devices, so we'll talk more about that later. Now that I have my hands on both of these devices, we can talk more authoritatively on the performance differences between them. This video is going to be in three parts. Firstly, we're going to talk about the different settings of the Aurora family and how those affect the image that you get. Second, we're going to talk about the differences between the Pro and the other models. And lastly, we're going to talk about the performance differences between these two devices. If you want to skip straight to the performance thing, you can just use the YouTube chapter system below. So first, what are the settings that you can actually change on the Auroras and what do they actually do? I got a whole lot of comments from people on the last video who were essentially taking a homeopathic approach to the settings. They didn't really know how they worked. They didn't really know why they worked. They just thought they had come up with some sort of weird settings alchemy to make the devices perform better. The important thing to keep in mind is that there is no one way to set up the Aurora to get the best performance out of it. Everything is a trade-off. You can either have smoothness or you can have low light performance. And if you want one, you lose out on the other. That's just the reality of the technology. There's nothing you can do about that. There are only three settings that really matter on the Aurora and only one of them really matters very much. That is frame rate. The frame rate is everything on the Psyonix Aurora. There's a lot of guys out there that say the latency isn't that bad because they've set the frame rate to 60 Hertz. There's a lot of guys out there that say the low light performance isn't that bad because they've set the frame rate to 7.5. The Psyonix Aurora family are cameras and they function like cameras. The frame rate is effectively how long the sensor is gathering light for each exposed frame of the video. If you have a faster frame rate, you're going to get a much smoother video. You're also going to get less light per frame. So the image is going to be a lot darker and vice versa. What that means for the Aurora is that you can set the frame rate to 60 frames per second, which gives you a very, very smooth image. Or you can set the frame rate to 7.5 frames per second, which gives you an extremely jerky image, but you get significantly more light. If you think about how much light the sensor can process in one second, you can then divide that. You can divide it into 60 frames, or you can divide it into 30 frames. The performance of the sensor is unchanged, so at 60 frames you've got half as much light and twice as many frames, which makes it smoother. There's no way around that. That is a hard limitation of cameras. That's how cameras work. That's how all cameras work. That's how all cameras are always going to work pretty much as long as cameras exist. And the Psyonix Aurora is a camera. The other setting that makes a small amount of difference, but not very much, is the resolution. These cameras can be set to either 1280 by 720 or 640 by 360. The sensor is capable of generating a 720p image. Running it in half resolution doesn't really allow it to process any more light. If you see any increase in brightness at all, it's because the image is an average of the pixels that are actually on the sensor. Cutting the vertical resolution in half can make it a little easier for the camera to process the image, but you are not creating any more light by doing that. Something to keep in mind with the Aurora cameras is that when you have them in photo mode, you cannot change the resolution and you cannot change the frame rate. Photo mode always runs the viewfinder at 60 hertz or 60 frames per second, and photo mode always shoots in 720p. When you're in video mode, you can change the resolution and the frame rate, and the viewfinder will virtualize those settings for you. What that means is that photo mode is always running at 720p and 60 frames, whereas video mode is going to run at whatever settings you have dialed in. We'll talk more about what you can do with that later on. The last setting that may have some effect on the image quality is the color filter. You can run these cameras in either night color mode, grayscale mode, or green scale mode. The important thing to keep in mind here is that the Psyonix Aurora is a color camera. The sensor generates a color image. If you set it into grayscale mode or green scale mode, you are applying a filter to the image after the fact. Again, you're not creating any more light all you're doing is applying a filter effect to an image that is already color as it comes out of the camera. That being said, you may want to run these in grayscale mode because black and white image noise is a lot less harsh on the eyes than colored image noise. The effect is more noticeable if you're looking at the image through the viewfinder of the camera. Once you actually have the video files in hand, there's really not a lot of difference between color mode and grayscale mode. However, when you're looking at it on the tiny viewfinder in the Aurora, it may help a little bit to go into grayscale. But again, you're not actually turning it into a black and white camera. You are not bypassing the color filter on the sensor. You're just desaturating the image after the fact. When we get to performance, we'll talk more about how you can modify these settings to get the most out of the Aurora, depending on what you're trying to do with it. 
In the meantime, it's important that you understand what the different settings on the Aurora actually do. And it's also important that you understand that they are the same regardless of which model of Aurora you have. The Pro doesn't have the magical ability to give you 60 frame smoothness at 30 frame brightness. That's just not how it fucking works. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between these two devices. Externally, they're pretty much identical. They have the same focus ring, they have the same scene selector that can move between night mode, twilight mode, and day mode. These have essentially the same camera body, they have the same layout of controls, they have the same battery slot, they have the same SD card slot. All of that is functionally identical. There's only one clear difference that you can notice between these cameras, and that's that the sensor seems to sit a little bit closer to the front lens on the Pro than it does on the other models of the Aurora. As for the lens itself, I've seen the claims made that the optics quality on the Pro is better than that on the Sport. That seems to be a completely baseless assumption. There's no reason to think that that's actually true. Both of these have the same lens specifications, they are the same objective lens diameter, and they also have the same f-stop, which is a 1.4 when they're in the night mode. What's important about that is that almost all night vision monocular devices have a lens with a 1.2 f-stop. If I understood my Photography 101 class correctly, an f1.2 lens lets in half again as much light as an f1.4. The internal differences between the Pro and the Sport, as well as the other models, again, are hard to really guess at. Psyonix doesn't like to publish any of the hard facts about their cameras or their sensors, probably because they wouldn't be very impressive if they did. Some guys that have done bootleg teardowns of these things have said that the sensors are identical. And that may be true, and it may not be true, it's hard to say for sure. I've seen the claim made over and over again that the Pro model has a shorter viewfinder latency than the other models. I don't believe that to be true. I don't think Psyonix has ever claimed that, and they certainly seem to behave identically to me. We're going to touch on frame rate again for a minute here. The latency of the viewfinder is sometimes claimed to be 11 milliseconds. I don't know where that number came from, but I've seen it a couple places. So just for the sake of argument, let's go with 11 milliseconds. That's not bad. There's really no reason that an 11 millisecond delay on the viewfinder shouldn't be completely usable. The problem is this. When the light level drops down, you're going to have to reduce the frame rate. The lowest frame rate you can make use of if you're actually trying to get video, move, or shoot with one of these things is the 24 frames mode. That is almost three times as much light as the 60 frames mode. However, at 24 frames per second, there is about 41 milliseconds per frame. That means that your 11 millisecond viewfinder latency is pretty much bullshit because you're still waiting 40 plus milliseconds for the next frame to come up. The other differences between the Aurora Pro and the Aurora Sport are a lot less interesting. The Aurora Pro has got a built-in compass, which can be kind of interesting. It's got a built-in GPS if you're into that sort of thing. It's also supposedly weapon rated, although just looking at these things, I'm not really sure if that's a real physical difference or if it's just their willingness to replace it because it costs almost twice as much. The Aurora Pro also comes with two batteries instead of one battery. It comes with an SD card instead of no SD card. It comes with a locking waterproof case. Those are some nice goodies and probably make up a significant portion of the price increase, although mostly I'm sure it's just the GPS features. Another feature of the Aurora Pro is that it's supposedly capable of augmented reality. However, I don't think that's actually happened yet. I think that's just a feature that Psyonix plans to update later with firmware. From the looks of it, the augmented reality feature is going to be tied in with the Psyonix Aurora app. Maybe you get all your buddies to install the Psyonix Aurora mobile app and then sync it up to the camera and then you can see their little markers on screen when you look in their direction. How well that's actually going to work remains to be seen. My guess is that it won't work particularly well and it's not going to be particularly useful, but that's just based on my experience with the Psyonix app so far, which is pretty bad. So at last, let us talk about performance. When I got my Aurora Pro out of the box, it had firmware version 1.3. I shot a little test footage at 1.3 and then updated it to the newest available firmware through the mobile app, that is 1.31. When I updated the Aurora Sport from the default firmware to the latest version to do the original test for that, there was a significant difference. Night and day, there was less noise and better contrast on the new firmware. With the Pro, there really was no difference at all that I could determine, but again, it was already on 1.3, so it's possible that there was an older version of the Aurora Pro firmware before I got mine that didn't perform as well, and the 1.3 and up was actually a significant improvement for that. Kind of hard to tell. I had speculated in the original video that the performance differences between the Pro and the Aurora Sport were not that significant, particularly after you update the firmware on the Sport. Now that I've actually got my hands on the Aurora Pro, I've tried it out, and I gotta say, I am completely blown away by how little difference there is between them. Good lord, this is horrible, dude. What's up? This sucks. Is it bad? 
bad now? It's useless now. Oh, Wait, hang on. Let me try the, the cope settings. Sorry, I'm just kind of being an asshole for no reason. The Pro does perform a little bit better than the Psyonix Aurora Sport. The difference in contrast and noise between the Pro and the updated Aurora Sport doesn't seem that significant. Really, the Pro has just got ever so slightly better low light performance. As for what's responsible for that slight increase in performance, could it be a better lens? Could it be a better sensor? I kind of doubt it. It might just be that the sensor is closer to the lens on the Pro. However, everything else about the cameras is still the same. You still have to choose between low light performance and latency. The difference in performance is so small that you cannot run the Pro in 60 frames mode in the sort of situation where you would have to run the Sport in 24 frames mode. Despite the increase in performance on the Pro, it still doesn't even come close to the low light performance of Generation 2 night vision. And again, all of the other limitations, such as the incredibly narrow field of view and the frame rate and the latency and the low resolution, those are all still issues with the Pro. Something to keep in mind about the differences between digital night vision and analog night vision is the performance fall off. With the Aurora Sport and the Aurora Pro, everything looks pretty much fine until all of a sudden you hit a light level at which point it can no longer operate and the image goes from decent to terrible immediately. So that means that if I'm using Generation 2 or Generation 3 night vision in an extremely low light environment, I may not be getting an image that looks like broad ass daylight, but I am getting something usable. Whereas with digital night vision, as soon as you hit that limit, it just turns into complete digital noise. So let's talk about the actual use for these devices. If you want a night vision monocular, the Pro is just as bad for the job as the original Aurora and the Sport. They are simply not well suited to that application. Doesn't matter what kind of weird upside down bridge mounts you get to mount two of these things to your fucking bump helmet. It's not a good idea. Don't waste the fucking money trying to turn one of these into a night vision monocular. Just stop. If you want to use one of these as a low light observation device, you might find a little bit of value there. If you're just trying to record some low light rain shenanigans, again, these work pretty well for that, as long as you are aware that they're going to need quite a bit of supplemental illumination to turn out a usable image. So when are the improvements of the Pro going to be worth it versus the Sport? I have to decide which one of these cameras I'm going to keep and which one of these I'm going to get rid of. I'm tempted to keep the Aurora Pro because the slight improvement in image quality is going to mean better production values for my YouTube channel. If I was actually just trying to use one of these as a quick and dirty night vision monocular or just to fuck around with in the woods, I would absolutely go with the Sport. I said it in the last video, and I'll say it again in this one, I'm sure you've seen some videos that claim to show the Psyonix Aurora doing a really great job of filming in low light. All of those videos are bullshit. A lot of people take this thing out into the suburban backyard, they do some filming with it, and they're super blown away by how well it performs. I've got some footage from the Aurora Sport that I took in a city park with no lights on in the middle of the night. Because there's absolutely zero illumination in the park, you could make the claim that it's a pitch black environment. But it really isn't. It's in the middle of the city, there's an enormous amount of light pollution. When you actually take one of these into the actual dark, it can't see shit. Anybody who claims otherwise is either stupid or they're lying to you. I want you to know that. That being said, what are the settings you can use to get the most out of the Aurora family of cameras? Well, we already know that the photo mode always runs the camera in 720p at 60 frames. What you can do then is set the video mode to 360p at 24 frames, which is going to be the most possible light performance and the bare minimum of frame rate performance that will still allow you to sort of move and look around. That basically means that you have two different modes of the camera on tap. If you set it to photo mode in a brighter environment, you get smooth frame rates, but you can drop it back into video mode if things get really dark and you need a little bit more low light performance. If you're gonna be using one of these for a long time, I would recommend you use the grayscale just because it's a little easier on the eyes. However, it doesn't actually make that much of a difference, so if you're trying to film with it, you might as well go with the color because that's kind of the whole point. You may also see the claim of people saying that you can run an extremely bright helmet-mounted illuminator with one of these. I'm not really sure how they come up with this bullshit. If you actually try to shoot with one of those, you're going to get a lot of splashback on your gun and your optic. It's not actually that fucking usable. You could use one of these with a powerful weapon-mounted illuminator, but that really is only about 25% of the experience when it comes to moving and using night vision. Hopefully this is the last time I have to make a video about the Psyonix Aurora, although we are going to do a comparison video between different types of night vision, including digital night vision, later on. Still working on that one. It's somewhat of an ordeal. Anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will talk to you guys later. This isn't a cliff bar, though, so... Oh, is it a kind bar? Ride. No, it's a, like a Nature Valley... What do I have? Oh, man, Nature Valley used to be the shit, bro. I ate a kind bar on the way up here. It cost $2.50 fucking cents. Jesus Christ.